Welcome back to the CCSK exam prep course from Cybrary. In this module, we are going to create the foundation and the building blocks of content for subsequent modules and activities of this course. Uh, it's very important because we're going to be defining the core what is cloud computing at, at an theoretical, abstract business value level. Um, it really gives you a good perspective on ways you are going to look at things and the way we're going to analyze in more detail the various aspects and considerations that cloud brings, in particular when it comes to security. Moving forward in this video, we're going to review the definitions of cloud computing, as well as the role of resource pooling in the cloud model. So while this information may be perceived as very introductory if you've been working with cloud, it's, it's always good to take a step back and just re-understand the core principles and foundations around cloud so that you can have an intelligent conversation, maybe somebody that's not so technical, just explaining it in the most simplistic terms, what is cloud and why is it a big thing in the technology space? So let's start by defining cloud computing itself. Here we have two different um, definitions, one from NIST, one from ISO. And cloud isn't just a technology thing, right? It is an operational model for managing, controlling, and paying for technology infrastructure that's being used. So let's read the NIST definition of cloud computing. You're not going to have to recite these verbatim, but you're really going to want to understand what these are and some of the important elements of these definitions, right? So cloud computing is a model for enabling ubiquitous, convenient, on-demand network access to a shared pool of conjurable computing resources, networks, servers, storage applications, and services that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. And we're going to get further into defining and decomposing cloud, and you'll see which aspects of this definition really stand out to create a difference between just traditional virtualization and true cloud. Whether it's a public cloud or private cloud, there are some things beyond just saying, oh, it's virtual servers, therefore it's the cloud. There's much more than that. If we look at the ISO definition, it's a paradigm for enabling network access to scalable and elastic pool of shareable physical or virtual resources with self-service provisioning and administration on demand. So you're starting to get a theme. It's more than just virtual machines, right? Elastic, being able to scale up, scale down, being able to self-service and perform these operations without calling somebody sitting over in the data center or some sort of an admin level person, right? Enabling end users or enabling businesses more directly to be able to allocate resources from this common pool. In fact, if we expand on that concept of a cloud as a pool of resources, let's talk about it a little more, right? It really is the simplest way to describe cloud is, is you take a bunch of computers, CPU, memory, a bunch of uh, data storage devices, right? You pool them all together, and then you have somebody who's responsible for managing those physical resources as well as the networking and connections between those resources, the network to access those resources from an external place, whether it's over the internet, such as a public cloud provider, right, or even within an internal network. And then we have this layer of virtualization that sits on top of that, which allows the cloud users to allocate portions of those resources within these pools when they want to do it. And then when they're done with those resources, they let go of the resources and they return them to the general pool. It's, it's an on-demand utility. It's, it's a model for usage, kind of like electricity in a certain sense, right? And the pools, as they get allocated to the individual clients or customers, um, they, they're isolated from other clients and customers, right? But this common pool may be getting access by multiple clients and customers in different businesses, in different um, industries, maybe even competitors, right? And that concept of having such a different audience tapping on the same resource pool is often referred to as multi-tenant environment. Um, and we'll be getting into that. And you'll be hearing that term again and again. Let's talk a little bit more about a cloud user. So I've mentioned client, customer. I'm going to use certain terms interchangeably, but as a basis, let's define some of these things. So a cloud user is a person or organization requesting and using the resources of the cloud. So uh, this is a NIST term that um, 
that we're, we're defining here. I may also call them a client. I may call it the consumer. I might even say the term cloud actor, right? This is the, the end user, the, the beneficiary of the cloud, the person who's paying the cloud. But on the other end of the spectrum, we have the cloud provider. That's the person or organization that delivers and manages that resource pool, the compute, the network, and the storage. I might call it the service. I may say cloud service provider. I may just say service provider. Um, Brokers, carriers, these are other aliases that you should just be aware of because when you're taking the exam, these terminologies may be used. And then, of course, when I'm talking to it, I might flip between these different terms. But it's very important. We have, you know, the kind of the end user, the beneficiary of the cloud, and then we have the person who's providing and managing and taking care of the cloud and, and of course, charging the end user for the cloud and doing some billing and so forth. And that wraps it up for this video. Just to recap what we were looking at at the tail end of the video, we reviewed the definitions of cloud computing, the NIST version, as well as the ISO definitions. Then we looked at resource pooling, the role of resource pooling, as well as defining a lot of terminology that we'll be using for the remainder of this course, and you'll also encounter on the CCSK exam.